took Professor Crandall to the hospital, but he died without regaining consciousness. Too bad. Now, we never will learn the reason for his strange behavior. An autopsy showed that he died of an overdose of a chemical known as curava. Curava? Never heard of it. It's a rare chemical that affects the brain tissues, causing madness and then death. If we could find the source of this curava, it might lead us directly to the purple monster. Yes, Craig is checking on that now. What did you find out, Craig? Well, Curava is handled locally by the pharmacy supply company. They've had only one customer. A certain blind man uses it occasionally, diluted as an eye wash. I've already tried to contact the doctor who wrote the prescription, but I haven't been able to locate him. Why don't we check on the blind man, Craig? Well, oh, that's a good idea, Sheila. Would you mind taking care of it? He's uh, an organ grinder named Tony. He usually hangs out around Fifth and Elm Streets. While I'm at Crandall's inquest, suppose you go down and see what he can tell you. All right. Is your name Tony? Yes, it is. I understand you've been using a chemical solution for your eyes. Uh, something known as Curava? What about it? I'm merely interested in locating the doctor who prescribed that treatment. Oh, his name is Morley. He lives at 859 Pine Street. Thank you. Thank you, miss. Key calling HQ. This is HQ. Go ahead. Some girl was just here and she was trying to pump me about the Curaba. So I sent her to Logan's place on Pine Street. Good. We'll be there before she is. Get in touch with me if anything else happens. Right. Must be that Leighton girl snooping around. Very likely. The day is when she comes to Logan's place, she'll walk right into our hands. Come along, Garrett. is ready for a test. Good. Let's see how it works. That pan contains a small charge of explosive wired to the electric eye mechanism. The powder will be set off by an electrical impulse transmitted to the relay box. Proceed with the demonstration. Watch the door. The girl may be along any moment. The power beam is on now. That establishes a contact between the electric eye lenses mounted in this door frame. Watch what happens when I walk through the door and break the contact between the lenses. Okay. Excellent. This should prove invaluable to me. Girl's coming. Let her in.
Come in, Miss Layton. Straight ahead. The purple monster. I should have suspected this was a trap. Well, you can't know everything, lady. But she knows some things we'd like to know. Sit down. I understand you've shown an unusual interest in Curaba. Just how much do you and Foster know about it? I'm not talking. I believe you'll change your mind. Tie her up, Garrett, while she thinks it over. I'd advise you to let me go. Craig Foster will never stop searching until he finds me. <laughs> but he may not find you alive. You're sure that a young lady hasn't questioned you about it? Nobody has spoken to me all day. Well, thanks anyway. Thank you, sir. Seven. T calling out seven. I just had another visitor, a young fellow. He was asking about that girl. Foster. What'd you tell him? Well, I told him that. Oh, sir, I, I ain't done nothing wrong. Yeah, a blind man recognizing a policeman just comes natural to you. Grab that hand, organ officer. They got him. What about this Tony? How much does he know? The wavelength and the radio call number of our hideout, but not the location. We can change the wavelength. Anything else? The address of this place. Will he talk? Under enough pressure, he might talk. Come on, out with it. Who were you talking with on that radio? I tell you, I don't know. I've never seen him. Look, mister, the men you're involved with have several murders to answer for. You better remember that. You might be seriously implicated. All right. His name is Garrett. Where can I find him? He's at a small house at the edge of town. 859 Pine Street. Take this man in for further questioning. I'm going to that house. Foster's probably on his way here right now. So you'd better connect the electric eye mechanism to those cases of explosives. So when Foster steps into the room, he and the girl both will be blown to bits. But I've spent months building this machine, and now you want me to blow it up. It's better than leaving it here for Foster to find. We certainly don't have time to move it, so get busy. Get out. Hold it. Where's Sheila Layton? How do we know? Let's take a look in that other room. 